would be most useful for you in our conversation today? Um, right now, I'm really struggling with um, <clears throat> with uh, a personal statement essay. I don't, I, I, I don't know what to write. Like I know that I have to write why I want to go to law school, but forming a story in a way that is um, how do I say that is compelling, but at the same time doesn't make you sound like you're whining is. Uh, is is a bit of a struggle. I've been struggling with it all, all week actually, and um, and I really have to submit it today only. I have a friend who's been uh, who helped me out. He's uh, he works in the media, so he's good with editing and that sort of thing. So he did try to help me out. Um, but still, it's it's really hard to paint a picture that is um, how do you say that is compelling enough with words. That's my problem right now. Of course, of course. Now, it sounds like your friend's able to help with the, the copy editing, like the yeah, proper and, grammar and sentence structure yeah, and all of yeah. that. Correct. But what about the and topic, he, though? Yeah, and he even su suggested a structure. He said that um, I'm reading from what he made notes. His handwriting is terrible, so <laughs> I don't think you can read it. Um, <laughs> So he said, you should start with a series of flashbacks which escalate in severity, showing that your character development and resilience. Uh, and then he said that show how that um, motivated you to make a change into law. Because earlier, before pursuing law school, I used to work in media. So he said that show how you made that change. I mean, he's right. I, I know he's right, but I just don't know how to make that happen. I mean, he can't write it for me, right? Like, of course. I don't know how to make that happen. And it's, um, it's really embarrassing considering I was an editor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Olivia, because I don't think your friend is right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why. Oh. A series of flashbacks showing your character and perhaps how it's evolved over time. The problem here is a series of flashbacks. All of that to me sounds plural in nature, like you want to have multiple flashbacks. Yeah. A series of them. But the problem is that your personal statement has got to be quite short. Right. Typically around two pages, double spaced. You don't have enough time to go in depth with several different examples from a variety of areas. Instead, you've got to pick one thing and go deep on it. The idea of a series of flashbacks sounds cool from a creative writing sense, but that's not yes. what the personal statement is supposed to be. Correct. I even, um, I, I, I did uh, pick in the beginning when I wrote my personal statement, I say, I don't know if I sent it to you or not, but uh, I wrote it and I picked up one single thing that made me want to become a lawyer. So um, as a child and uh, up until a couple of years ago, actually, I suffered years of domestic abuse. So that was my main motivation to, you know, seek independence and and get out from from that situation. So. I did write about it, but I sent it to my friend because I'm like, I need multiple perspectives here. I don't know what to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So he said that what you've written is is fine, but he said that you've gotten into too much details, and I I agree with him. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't know how to um, say. Well, I'll take one single incident from say a series or from years of that sort of abuse, but I just don't know how to connect it to a to a larger picture of uh, of wanting to affect change. Like, right, you right. know what I mean? Of course, I do. So the question is not necessarily the details of every single thing that happened to you, or maybe not in all detail of what happened, but rather what you took away from it and how it's shaped yeah. you as a person and what yes. you want to do going forward. Yes, and I, I that's what I'm having trouble uh, putting into words. I know what I got from it in the sense that I want to be independent. I want to affect positive change. Uh, and the re that, uh, that being in that situation inspired me to, um, me to believe in, how do I say, I believe in justice kind of thing. And, and that's why 
law is i mean justice law and it's not it's not rocket science you can figure it out like that's why i want to become a lawyer but telling it in a compelling manner is my problem okay so like we- i'm having trouble putting it into words yeah let me ask you this why do you want to go to law school specifically in terms of what you want to do afterwards do you have an idea i do have an idea i want to work in corporate law what i want to do is i want to work in corporate law but at the same time i also want to uh while i'm in law school i don't want to just wait around until i graduate and write my bar exam and and etc 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 uh i want to while i'm in law school i want to get involved in clinics and uh, that deal with the sort of uh, the sort of domestic business like criminal justice kind of thing and um i also want to i i just feel that after law school if i go into corporate law i have i worked in a corporate law firm and i thrived there and i worked in a in two personal injury law firms and i was not happy there so i know for a fact i gel well with corporate law okay cool now the clinics you want to work on in law school is it possible that you might want to continue that work pro bono on the side after you graduate yes i would Yes, I would. Then I would talk about that. Everything you just said about what you want to do in the clinics, share that. That, you know, obviously your personal experience has shaped the work you want to do in these clinics, and that's a concrete example of what you want to do in law school connecting it to your personal experience. The corporate law seems quite unrelated other than that you've had exposure to it. Right, right. But in perhaps a separate essay you could talk about that. So the the domestic abuse in the clinics that could perhaps be the topic for a diversity statement an addendum and then your main personal statement could relate to the work you've done in corporate law showing that you have real world exposure to what the practice of law is actually like so i'm just uh, making notes whatever you're saying uh later on to so what what you think is what if i do something like i show that in this thing happened to me uh oh my god so this particular thing happened to me in what paragraph 1 i say that uh while i'm in law school in in the clinics that your law school offers i would like to do criminal justice and i would like to help people who are not able to gain get a uh, legal representation or who are not able to afford legal representation while i'm in law school and then after the third paragraph can i say um uh, after i graduate i would like to do corporate law because like you said i've had real world exposure to it but on the side but as but i would also like to do pro bono work in say domestic violence cases or say um something like that can i say that absolutely something like that would be fine i would probably keep the diversity statement or an addendum focused on the domestic abuse related law the clinics oh. and such you don't even need to mention corporate there you could just say i'd want to continue this pro, bo- pro this pro bono work in some capacity after graduating from law school and then the main purpose of statement could talk about the corporate law exclusively have that be a focus so a, a, a separate focus for each essay okay that that probably makes more sense uh so how say if i when i'm trying to say in my personal statement as when i'm trying to focus on corporate law what would what should i how should i structure it for the corporate law one well i'd want to know more information about the work you did yeah can you share more about well, it well uh, when i um after my bachelor's i went to a legal program i worked in media for a couple of years and then i got the illusion with it and i went into paralegal because i'd never had any legal training except for watching law and order on repeat so and that's true it's it's very true i'd, I'd never had any legal training so i was unsure of if i'd do well in law but i got into my paralegal program in, in ontario paralegals get licensed so i even got licensed um uh, uh it, i was very good at it i i found out that i understood law well i was very well able to uh formulate arguments i understood case law uh, and 
there was one particular course, Contracts and Thoughts, which really stuck with me. Everybody in my class hated it. And I mean, hated it. I, I'm talking hardcore hatred here. So yeah. they hated it, but I loved it. And they were like, why do you like it? It's so boring. But I enjoyed learning about it. So, um, and I think I was probably the only one. So um, I found out that I, I, I like that more than most other cases, most other courses. I mean, we had criminal law too. That was super interesting. But at the end of the day, like, no, I don't think I'd want to do that at, as, as my first, as my main, main specialization, so to speak. So then I uh, graduated and we had to do a, a field placement, um, sort of like an internship at the end of your program so that you can, uh, complete your field placement, and then you can get licensed. So I um, spent months basically dropping off my resume. I would literally take a walk down downtown at the financial district, and I basically just dropped off my resume with HR people. I'm like, call me, you know. I didn't say call me, maybe, but I did say call me, you know, when you a position opens up. And I got hired as a document specialist at Gowling WLG. Now, Gowling is one of the top law firms here. That was the corporate law, law work I did. So in that, I, was, I did uh, revisions, I did proofreading, a lot of proofreading, because you have to pay attention to details and other things, of course. Uh, you probably know this more than I do. I did, uh, I compiled report book, record books, closing books, estate law books, uh, a, a couple of corporate minute books as well. And uh, I did transcriptions, so people would uh, would have would send their recorded uh, whatever their their record the recorded stuff was, like lawyers, legal assistants, law clerks, whatever whoever was sending it through, they would send it through a through a software, interfirm software, Big Hand it was called, and then I would transcribe that. Uh, sometimes assist other lawyers. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, other team members who were more senior than me. Like I was the junior most person in that department. So I would assess them sometimes in um, anything. Like they would do these big agreements, uh, which like, you know, they, they were like 100 page agreements or something. And they would have to insert riders, make sure that formatting was right. So sometimes for content, they would give it to me because apparently I was good at editing and I'm like, duh, but at the same time, I mean, I didn't say duh, but at the same time, I, I knew I was good at editing because I did it for years. Um, and Hold on a second, Olivia. I think we've got what we need already right now. So I'm going to cut you off okay. for a second just so that we can- Okay, great, this. great. No problem. So basically no problem. what I'm hearing is that you're highly self-motivated and driven. You walked around downtown, dropping off your resume and somehow- you got a job at one of the top law firms in Ontario or in your city. And through that work, you got exposure to what the practice of law is really like, the nitty gritty, and you worked as part of a team. And through that exposure, you discovered that you were good at this and you loved it. And you have that real world exposure that you want to continue pursuing after you graduate from law school. That's all you need. And I would take one particular example of one case you worked on to illustrate this the most exciting example you can think of, maybe take three and flesh out the details on each one of those, then whichever is the most compelling, you use that as your jumping off point to start off in the moment, then you zoom out to the picture of how you got there and then what you want to do afterwards. How does that sound for a structure? That actually sounds great. I just don't know, like, uh, so, so say in my first paragraph, I talk about, how I got involved in, in law and how I got real world exposure. Then in second paragraph, what you're saying is look at three cases. So first case would be like maybe first paragraph, I'm guessing. Not and exactly. What I'm saying actually is as part of your brainstorming exercise, write out three different examples, but don't use okay. all three in the final draft. Pick whichever okay. is the most compelling. Oh, right one. And use okay. only that one in the personal statement. And rather than listing everything chronologically, start with start. that compelling example. Then go back and talk about how you got there, dropping off your resume. Then talk about what a little bit of describing what your day-to-day -day activities are like. And then look towards the future. And so say, okay, so 
I need to think of a case I did. Um, there weren't many exciting cases technically for us because we were, um, um, I was in the document production group. I, I don't know if you're familiar, that, but yeah. a lot of these big law firms have those because they need like an entire department because of the volume of documents. They need an entire department to take care of formatting lots of things. Uh, and so I did, I never really knew the nitty gritty details about a certain case, but I did know nitty gritty details of uh, a couple of cases from other law firms I worked at because I was working in a legal assistant capacity there. So if I'm working in a legal assistant capacity, I'm actually exposed to the cases directly. Uh, but they were not like corporate law cases. They were like personal injury, uh, uh, slip and fall, um, a car accident. One was a fire case, something like that. So I'm not sure how to... Um, connect that to like a corporate law structure. Maybe I could say drop out one single case uh, that was that I knew about and then say uh, this I worked at a personal injury law firm and then later on when I got uh, later on when I completed my field placement I got hired there and then I got into the corporate law and I, I could maybe show how a little different corporate law is and then I understand the mechanisms of both. Maybe show that show that way. Would that be okay? Yeah, you could still mention it in passing, of course. Yeah. Okay. Because I then I'll do that because I am unsure how to like work it out. And my friend, he, the one who I told you who helped me with copy editing, he even went as far as saying that uh, show that when you were working in a show the role of your uh, of what you were doing in your journalistic capacity as of an activist. But I think you're right in the sense that the amount of things he's brainstormed and the amount of the structure he's put, there are like five, six things in it. He even talked about effective altruism. And I'm like, I read about it, but I don't, it just sounds, comes off as super pretentious because I would never use this word in real life conversation to with anybody. I mean, he would, but I wouldn't. <laughs> then don't use it. In so, yeah, keep, keep it. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I figured because his structure, while it's very, um, it's very, how do you say editorial heavy, but like I published this in a magazine, I wouldn't be giving it to an admin department, admissions department, because they're like, what the hell is this person talking about? Right. Right. Well, we're actually about up for today, Olivia, but before we sign okay. off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Uh, basically, just how to write a personal statement essay. I think it's. Uh, I think I'm. I'm very thankful to you. I'm very very grateful that you helped me narrow down and put some things in perspective. Take a look and see if there's anything uh, that can be improved upon or not. Glad I was able to help Olivia. Please keep in touch. Thank you so much. If I can help in any way as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.